Hi, welcome to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends, and I'm Dee, and these are some of my friends, and we missed last week, but Chella held it down and um, did a wonderful job on domestic violence, and it was, so uh, I had to turn in, and, and it kind of reminded me of some things, and it was intense, but it was something that needed to be out there. So um, tonight we have um, a, a special friend of mine's, and actually I've known her for, oh, about 13, 14 years, and, um, well, before I go there. We're going to oh, we're going to go and uh, <laughs> we're going to go and talk to my friends. I'm going to introduce my friends. So tonight I have Theda. Hi, Theda. Hello, Dee. How are you? I'm wonderful. You know, I'm glad you're here again. You I'm know, with us. And, glad to be and, here. And um, you know, holding it down. And we have a new uh, friend out here, and we're going to introduce. Hi. Hi. Now, I know you as Monique. Yes. But your full name is Shakima Monique Clark, right? Yes. Okay, cool. But I've known you from, oh my gosh. From yay high. Yes, you know, but I didn't yeah. even know you were that yay high, you know. I thought you were probably about yay high, you know. Yeah. Not my age, okay. But <laughs> but you, you know, you were holding it down. We, we actually met at the the. The salon. At the salon, yeah, you know. Flights of Beauty. You know, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going out there, and we were doing our hair, you know, yeah. getting our hair done. And you were what? You now I telling me? I was about 14, 15. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you were doing your thing, you know. And I knew there was something going on, but I didn't really know what. But, you know, I'm just glad I got to know you a little more and a little more. And, um, uh, Recently, you, you wrote a book. Yes. Right. And, well, because this is your first time, I'd like to ask you, what's your passion for life? Mm, what's my passion for life? Yeah. Um, I have a few passions. Mm -hmm. One, I think my, my number one passion is an educator. Mm -hmm. I love my kids. I've been working in education for 10 years now, and I don't see myself doing anything else. Okay. Um, my other passion is to write. I love to write. I've always written since maybe nine, ten years old. I started writing. And now I use my writing to inspire others and, and to help others. And I've become an advocate, which is now a new passion. Oh, okay. um, I love just stepping out there and fighting for what's right and what's just, whatever I feel is right. I'm not hesitant to be a voice for it. Exactly. So, so you're transparent. Yes. I like transparency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I didn't really know what was going on with you as a young, spur, young person, but when I got your book about two years ago, that's when you um, Yeah, I wrote it. I, it was published in September of 2011. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's been... Almost three three years now. It's okay. Been three years. Okay. Yeah. And I read it back then, but I had to read it again. Okay. And it was very very deep. You know, it's like my heart went out to you. You know, but I'm so glad you were able to find your voice. You know, and that's yeah. a blessing. That, Amen. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's truly a blessing. Yeah. You know, so the fact that you know, of course, I want you to share. You know, because you have a, a powerful story that people need to hear. You know, so. And I, I asked you before you came on, were you, anything that, you know, we can't talk about? And she said, no. No, I'm an open book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's most of it, it's in the book anyway. Right. So, you know, I'm up for discussing it. Right, yeah. right. Because um, from where I stood, I didn't realize you were a child of abuse. Yes. You know, and um, the way it, it, it started was, what, your, your grandmother's boyfriend? Yes, that was the first time. He was the first when I was four years old. Um, four years old. One of my grandmother's boyfriend, or her boyfriend at the time, um, 
he was molesting me. I didn't really know what it was, yeah. but I knew it didn't feel right. Right, um, right. It wasn't until a few years later that I understood what actually happened, but it started when I was four years old. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when did you realize something <clears throat> was, you know, like, you, okay, at four years old, you knew something was wrong. Yes. But you said that, did you, t and this was the same boyfriend that was still dealing still doing something wrong at nine years old? He no. was still there? No, he, was, he wasn't He was there. Um, he was gone, I think, by the time I was maybe five or six. Mm -hmm. I think he was out of the picture. But um, it wasn't until I was about, I'd say, nine that I realized what had happened. I was reading an article, and I was a very smart kid. Mm -hmm. And I, the context clues of the article kind of gave me a, a clue as to what happened. Mm -hmm. And... I was, to be more specific, I was reading an article in a magazine, and the writer said something about molestation. Right. And I turned around and I asked my mom, mm -hmm. what did that word mean? Right. And she explained it to me, and it was in that moment that I realized, you know, what happened now had a name and right. now had a label. Right. right. So that's when I really understood what was going on. What did I'd you tell happened. your mom? Right. So that's what I'm going to ask. Yeah. Did you tell anyone? or No, or at that time, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone for a very long time. Was there a reason why you didn't want to? Um, to at that age, I was, I think there were several reasons. I was afraid of not being believed. Um, I was also afraid of that becoming my identity. I didn't want to tell my mother and then she discussed it with my grandmother or other family members and then every time I saw them, that's what they thought about. That was my fear, that that was going to become my identity that those would be the whispers every time I walked into a family function, you know. So I didn't want that to be a label slapped on me. So that made it a little hard for me to tell. And then at that time, it was also happening again, but with someone else. With so, the same person? No, it wasn't the same person at that time. By that time, I had started being molested again, but it was a different person. And I wasn't sure how they would react if I said something because they all knew that person too. So it was a little bit of fear for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so when you, um, how old were you when the molestation had started again? Um, when it started up again, I was probably about eight or nine. Wow. Yeah. And was it another person that was living in your household or was it? Yeah, it was, I, I'll say that it was a family member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was a family member um, several times, mm -hmm. different family members several right. times throughout the years. Because the abuse went on for 17 years, wow. but different people. Wow. So, yeah. Because yeah. I saw that you ran away. You tried to tell people at one point, yeah. but nobody really was listening. Yeah. Initially, I was acting out, mm -hmm. hoping that someone would ask like Why? what's going on yeah. and if no one was really responsive to it yeah. it was you know I caught the blame and I was running away for several reasons at that time my mom was heavily on drugs my dad was absent mm -hmm. and so instead of them questioning the situation I was punished mm -hmm. for running away yeah. it was oh she can't have her way so there she goes again yeah. you know so nobody really took the time to sit and say what What's is going, going on? on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I find a lot of um, parents, they're, they're learning too. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, and especially if they're into the drugs and, and what kind of drug of choice was your mom um, It started with marijuana. Mm -hmm. Then as time went on, it was crack cocaine. And mm -hmm. that's, she started um, with the crack. I guess I was probably about nine years old mm -hmm. and it didn't kick in hardcore until I was about 11. Mm. Then she was full-blown out there yeah. for some years, up until I was about 17. How much older was she than you? 18 years. 18 years? Yeah. So she had you she as had a, a teenager yeah, also? Yeah, she was young, yeah. And was it out of wedlock? Or yes. Was yes, my parents never got married. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, did she have issues also? Did you, do, did you ever get a chance to talk to her? and understand, because I know she's passed away now, but yeah. did you ever get a chance to really talk to her and find, did she get th help with the addiction or is well, she? Well, she ended up um, finally 
getting help. Mm -hmm. She was clean for the last two years before she passed okay, away. That's that's good. Yeah, um, we never really talked about what made her do the drugs, but my mother had lupus. She was diagnosed right after I was born. Mm -hmm. So now as an adult looking back, I understand it as that's how she dealt with her pain. Right, you know, right. when you're a kid, you don't really get it. You don't really know what's going on. And, you know, no one really knew what lupus was at right, that time. Right, right. So, you know, but she was always in and out of the hospital from kidney failure, from the lupus, dialysis. Mm. So I think that was her escape from the pain. But mm -hmm. at that time, I didn't understand right, that. You know, right, now right. as an adult looking back, I can kind of put those pieces together. Yeah, yeah. So... But, you know, by the grace of God, she was clean for at least two years that before she passed away. And I know you dedicated your book to yes, her. Yes, so it that is was dedicated. A blessing. And, and yes. your grandma. And my, my grandmother and, and my baby brother. Okay. Yeah. And your baby brother, how yeah. is he? Yeah. He's well. He yeah. um, He's living in North Carolina with the rest of the family. Okay. So it's only a few of us left here in New York. Okay. But um, he's doing well. Okay. Is he your only sibling? Yes, he's my only sibling. Okay. And you all had the same father? No, we didn't have the same father, but my father is... He considers my father his father. Okay. Yeah. They have, at one point, their relationship was closer than my relationship with my father. Okay. So, yeah, they consider each other son and father. Okay. Yeah. That's That's good. Good. But I know that um, there was a lot of other challenges when you, you said you had escaped, but you still also, well, you had addiction, but you said it was more education. Yeah. I, my addiction became school because right. that was my refuge. I, um, when I was 15, I started to volunteer at the elementary school mm -hmm. that I went to. And the teachers there and the principal and the secretary, they, were the, they each had a component of motherhood that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So they all took me under their wing and I would go and just volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I continued to go and volunteer. And I watched a lot of television. I was a Cosby kid. Okay. So Bill Cosby stressed education. Mm -hmm. That was the way out. So if nothing, if I knew nothing else, I knew I had to read, write, mm -hmm. and count. Right. And so I stayed in school. And it kept my mind occupied. I didn't have to think about what was happening at home, mm -hmm. you know, who was doing what, or what happened to me last night. I could escape into a book. Right. So that's what I did. And... I graduated high school a year early from 11th grade, and I went straight to college. Okay. And today I have six degrees. Six degrees? Six college degrees. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yes. And what, what do you have your degrees in? I have um, two associates, um, audio engineering and business management mm -hmm. or business administration. Okay. Then I have a bachelor's in English and a bachelor's in uh, business management. And I have a double master's in special education and general education. Oh, okay. Wow. Cool. How long did it take yes. you to, um, from college to finish, to graduate? Well, was I college? did two years, and then I stopped for a while. I was burnt out because I literally graduated high school on a Saturday and started college on Monday mm -hmm. and went two years straight. So I was a little burnt out, and I stopped going for a while. And maybe two years I stopped, and then I went back, and I finished up in 2011. I finished up. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and she's only 33 at this yes, point. Yes, I just turned 33 <laughs> last Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. I did, did I tell you the last time I saw you? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Happy yes, birthday. Thank you. But um, I know that you also had contemplated um, suicide. On a couple yeah, of I contemplated it and I tried it. Um, you did. Yeah, um, someone once said to me, uh, "You didn't try hard enough because people who really want to kill themselves actually kill themselves." Exactly. You um, really didn't want to go. Yeah, I didn't want to go, but I wanted to go. But God had a different plan for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I did try. I've taken pills. Um, I I drank bleach. I did different things, mm -hmm. and um, but. He wasn't ready to take me. No. He, there was a purpose for me, so yeah. I, here I am. Well, yeah. yeah, that's a blessing. Yeah. You know, because I know you had um, escaped also by having, and that's, I believe, how I, I met you, because you were seeing my, my hairdresser, my girlfriend's um, cousin. Yes. Right? Yeah. And he was, what, how many years older than you? He was 15 years older than me. Right. Yeah. 
and she became one of my best friends. Yeah. 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 And yeah. another mother figure to me. Right. So to this day, yeah, she's still big sister. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, yeah. she's big sister to all of us yeah. at this point. You know, so we are, are very much blessed to have her. Yeah. So we're going to go and take a quick um, commercial break, and okay. then we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and run Cockman, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkman, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. We're going to do a live commercial. Hi, I'm Renee Marie. I'm the uh, president of Language of Love Incorporated Foundation. I'm really happy um, to tell you that we're going to be doing a Language of Love telethon on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please look for uh, the location on my, um, my website, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And once again, it's Renee Marie Language of Love org, and the show um, will be on hosted on the Madhouse TV. It really is important for you to um, be aware of strokes and aphasia. Strokes is the third leading cause of death in the in America, and the first leading cause of disability. And it really is something that plays no favoritism, and it also really comes when you're not expecting. Nobody expects to have a stroke and nobody expects to suffer from aphasia and it really does play a huge, make a huge impact in your life and change your life in one split second. So we look forward to having everyone join us uh, once again on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. and you can follow us on uh, Renee Marie Language of Love org. Once again, it's Renee Marie Language of Love org, and we look forward to seeing you. God bless.
Welcome back to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends. And we have this shot of, of um, Monique's book, which is Silent Tears Inside the Soul of an Abused Child, a Collection of Poems. And um, I, was, I was oversighted by not giving that out. So I'm definitely going to give that out <laughs> at this point. And um, I read it for a second time, and it just brings my heart to you. And, you know, how powerful you are at this point to have you know, been able to, I know there's still challenges in your work in progress, but you have come so far and to bring this out to, to the light that, yes, there's so many people out here that are suffering, you know, and have these silent tears. So, you know, it is such a blessing that you were able to, you know, come and, and share it and help people to bring it to light, you know, yeah. so. I applaud your strength. Thank yes. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It's only by the grace of God, because if it was just me, I would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but people were praying for me, and one of the things that I, I always tell people is that one of God's greatest gifts is unanswered prayers. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed for him to take me out of here. Mm -hmm. But there were some prayer warriors somewhere that were praying for him to save me. Mm -hmm. And my prayers went unanswered. But their prayers were answered. Definitely. So I always say some of his greatest gifts are unanswered prayers because we ask for things and we pray for things that we think we want. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he knows better. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. And we were talking about Wanda. That's, yes. our, that's our, our girl, yes. you know, because we can share everything with her. And she will, you know, not judge us and just give us what she can give to help us get through it. Yes. And um, she, she just happened to be the cousin. And I know things, she wasn't happy with the, the relationship. No, 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 she wasn't happy with the relationship. <laughs> and it was one of those relationships that I kind of fell into because there was no supervision. Right. And it wasn't an abusive relationship, right. so to speak, but it wasn't healthy. a legal mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't mm -hmm. a, a really healthy yeah. relationship yeah. because I wasn't mature enough to understand the, the fullness of it. Right. But, um, you know, some great things came out of it. Okay. You know, I met some great people yes. who became family. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not holding any grudges. No, it's it's no. done. It's over with. Right. Life goes on. Right. Are you so, still in contact with them on occasion? or? I see them every now and again, mm -hmm. and I wish them all the best. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm moving on with life. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. He's not still doing the same thing, though. No, he's married with a family, and it, it ended once I was of age because I broke it off. He it proposed to me when I turned 18 and, you know, we were still together for a while, but I matured and I was, you know, I had outgrown that relationship mm -hmm. and it was time for me to move on. So. That's good that, that you take, you had the coverage and you recognized that you had to move on. And yeah. Did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I know that um, with, with all of what you had gone through, because even, like you had gone through gang rapes and, and yeah. all kind, of, just because you were trying to escape, but then ended up falling into yeah. you know the same people and just get, getting exposed to these so negative people. It's yeah. unfortunate, you know. But thank goodness you were able to just. But you never reported it to the police or anything like that. I only reported one incident, and that was a date rape situation. Right, I had to read yeah, yeah, I reported that. And I might as well not have because it yeah. was one, it, the, for me, the experience was more traumatizing. Reporting was more traumatizing than the actual experience. Yeah. So, and not that I discourage anyone from reporting because you absolutely should, yeah. but it wasn't a good experience for me yeah. personally. Did they blame you? What, 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 what about it? Um, what happened? Well, initially, I didn't go to the police right away. I went the following day. And the precinct that I went to, they told me that, it was out of their jurisdiction, and they just walked away from me. Like, they didn't say, you need to go here, or we'll drive you over to here, or we'll call them to come and get you. Like, they just said, this is not our jurisdiction, and walk. the officer walked away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I stood there not really knowing what to do, do at that point. I was really discouraged because I didn't want to report it, but a friend talked me into it, and... You know, I was standing there like, okay, well, what do I do now? And at that point, I started thinking suicide again because here it is, 
you know, from the it's happening again. again, you yeah. know, and this time I'm trying to do something about it and I'm not getting the help. Yeah. So I got in my car and I had actually planned on driving out to Long Beach and just walking out into the water until I can no longer feel the ground beneath my feet. Yeah. But that didn't happen. I found myself at the first precinct okay. and I reported it and um, the officers there were actually very nice mm -hmm. and they called two detectives. No, they actually drove me over to um, Manhasset to the hospital because I, I guess that's where they do all the um, rape kits and they called two detectives out and it was the longest, most tedious process ever. It's definitely not what you see on TV, no, the 20 minute process. No, no. It was hours and yeah, hours yeah. and different medications and you know, they have exams to take and yeah, yeah it, it was a very long a process. Let me see what, who's okay. on, the, on the line. Hi, welcome to Passion for Life with Dean Friends. Um, who do I have on the line? Hi, Dean, this, this is Jonathan, first time caller. Okay. Hi, Jonathan. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I just would like to say that I'm watching the show, and I would love to personally um, tell Monique what a beautiful light to the world she is and the, the courage, that, and, and, and I can't imagine how many people she might be saving right now at this moment because of her bravery, her strength, and her spirit. And I, I am actually sitting here in... in I, w I wouldn't say tears of, of sadness. I would just say tears of joy that this young lady has the uh, integrity and, and courage to do what she is doing on your show. And I take my hat up to you to allow people to see such uh, brave people come on and, and just expose themselves and let, them, let the world know. And I, 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 I'm sitting here thinking of how many kids she might be saving right now through her strength. And I... God, I bless you, and I couldn't thank you anymore. What a, what a blessing to have you on the show, and thank you for thank you. having her on the show. It's really, uh, I've watched the show before, but it's the first time I'm calling in, but what a beautiful, beautiful young lady, and my God, the world needs so many more people like her. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate you calling in. I, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Okay, God, God bless, bless you. you too. Take care. Bye-bye. So um, that's cool. And that's why I do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to finish the story about reporting, yeah. um, the officers, the two detectives that were put in charge of the case, one of them, you know, they ask you all these questions about your background, and they started asking questions about my relationship with my father, and because the the, the person who raped me, he was older than me. He was a lot older. So um, that was the first question. Well, what is your relationship like with your father? Because naturally, they figure I'm seeking a father figure mm -hmm. and dating these older men. And um, then they began asking questions about, you know, well, what clothes were you wearing? And had you been intimate with him before? And then one officer, you know, and they, they started asking about my childhood. Had you been abused before and once I told them my history mm. one officer she actually suggested to just drop the case and go and get counseling just leave it alone go get counseling and the other officer you know she was more on the we have to pursue this side mm. but they it in the end of it all they never interviewed him they never questioned him wow. they never and he never got caught and he didn't go to jail no yes no yes but no, she, no, she, no. she knew who he no. was yeah. but he had no, gone out. I, I know i, yeah. I meant he, yeah, he didn't crazy. get punished for it was what no he was he was never even questioned for it so that was the end of that so that was very disheartening yeah. and you know it, it was hard but again over time you know i just had to pray about it and let it go because otherwise it would make me crazy. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's, it's extremely challenging when, you know, people don't want to give you that validation. Yeah. You know, and that's what it is. It's just not giving you that validation. Yeah. But it's, it shouldn't be that way, you know. Unfortunately, people judge you on past. Yes. And that's not how you're supposed to. You know, this is what happened. I'm telling you the truth. 
you know, and why are you not believing me? Yeah, no matter yeah. what I may or may not have done, once you say no, no is no. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's exactly. the end of it right there. If I was feeding you and once you said I don't want any more, no, that's it. it. No. Yeah, I stop, <laughs> stop feeding me. I, leave me alone. It's over. So, yeah, but, you know. Wow. But I, I do encourage if anybody is going through it to report it. That yeah. was just my experience. Because yeah. yeah. so. even the, you know, the people that had molested you as a youngster, you know, those folks needed to be held accountable. You know, unfortunately, yes. they were not held accountable. But um, I, hopefully they had their just rewards. Well, you know, they, they definitely, they weren't held accountable in a court of law. But karma... <laughs> definitely yeah, held them accountable. Right, exactly. You know, God definitely exactly. took care of that. Well, so, that's you know, a blessing, yeah. you know, because, you know, God don't like ugly. No, you know? and he ain't it too fond of pretty No, either. this is true. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. those things, I just had to let it go. And yeah. it wasn't easy to no. let go. It, it, it took a lot of work. Yeah. Have you gone for counseling? Have you gone to, you know, um, seek any kind of... Um, during that time, no. No. I didn't want... I, I had tried, and it didn't work for for me because you get an hour a week, yeah. and, and that's by not the, enough. Yeah, and by the time you get to the height of your emotions, the session is over. Yeah. So now you're carrying this around for a whole nother week. Mm -hmm. You know what do I do with this? And yeah. that made that made me more crazy than dealing with what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So. At that time, no. But now, actually, yes, I've been in counseling for three years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. That, that, that has actually helped you pull yourself out of the despair? Well, the counseling? when I started the counseling, I started it not so much to deal with the abuse, but to deal with all of the residual things, like the relationships that were destroyed, mm -hmm. and to better understand myself and how I, how I understand what happened. Like, understanding why my mother did what she did and understanding that my father did what he knew how to do. He did the best that he knew how to do, you know, and trying to forgive my family members and mend those relationships mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's who we're left with. Right. So it's because actually once I wrote the book and I started speaking about it, those things in the book, I was free of. Mm. It was all the after the, the, the residual stuff mm -hmm. that I still had to deal with. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I do find that if you speak on it and let it out, rather than holding in it, because I, I feel like it's a cancer and it starts growing inside right. you. Absolutely. And if it starts growing inside you, where does it go, you know? And it just... It makes you physically sick. Sick, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you really have to let it out, yeah. you know, and, you know, be transparent, you know, and be just <sighs> free. Yes. You know, even though it's not all healed inside, but it's still, uh, it's a freeness that it, it helps you to heal. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, because we've all had our, our, our challenges in life, but, you know, maybe not to certain degrees or what have you, but I know that I've had challenges, I've seen challenges, I've, I've felt challenges, so, yeah. and you still go through it. Yeah, and that's you know? why the first page in the book says everyone has a story to mm -hmm. tell truly this just happens to be mine yeah. right. but everyone has a story to tell right. you know so and the more that I tell my story the more I take back my power it's therapeutic yeah. it's very therapeutic and so many people tell me their stories now colleagues family members friends like I get phone calls emails from people people that I would have never thought and that is like, you know, I've had people say, thank you for telling my story yeah. or thank you for being my voice. You know, so now I tell people I'm the voice for those who haven't found theirs yet yeah. because I have found the strength to talk about it. And they may never find the strength to talk about it, but they were strong enough to at least tell me. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step because yeah. it took me a long time to at least tell one person. Yeah. So, you know, that is the most empowering and each time I tell it I, I release another bag because it was never my bag to carry anyway so you know but I, I've been carrying it around and I'm almost load free <laughs> yes are you gonna write another book 
I am in the process of writing another book. I started and I stopped and I started because every time someone reads Silent Tears mm -hmm. and they start asking these questions, it's like, okay, should I switch the angle of the new book and answer these questions or like which way should I go with it? Well, we're going to um, talk about it in a few minutes. We're going to okay. take another commercial break and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. My name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. We a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. Find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy. Please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000. Or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Let our creativity work for you. We design business cards, brochures, annual reports, newsletters and magazines, menus and programs, flyers and mailers, signs and posters and more. We also do voiceovers. First impressions matter. Make yours count with an expressive voice artist. Distinctive, warm, soothing, natural delivery that can add believability and appeal to any audio project. Contact us to discuss how we can make your project a success. Sierra Graphics. That's info at SierraGraphics.com. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW.
Hi, welcome back to Passion for Life with Dee and Friends, and I'm Dee, and these are my friends, and we're having some real intense conversation with Monique, and, um, and about her book and her life, and it's really, really fantastic. I'm Thank just you. so glad you're here to share it. I'm glad to be here yeah. to share it. Uh, it's, and you have to come back again. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I, so I, there's a couple of questions that um, a couple of folks had um, shared with us, so I'm going to let right. Theta ask. Okay. okay. One question that I have to ask. Um, you, you published this book. Yes. And you have a lot of family members. They pick up this book, they read it. Yeah. Did anyone come back to you negatively, positively, or what, what was their, their reaction? Um, I had different reactions. The majority were good. Um, it was, some of them were funny. Um, like I had one of my uncles, he called me and he's like, you're lucky I didn't know about this. I would have had my shotgun, you know. So, you know, they were very supportive. Um, I had one cousin initially, she was supportive and then her story kind of changed a little bit. It went from, um, we're proud of you for doing this and speaking out to, well, we didn't know anything about it and we, we protect our own. and. She so, was feeling guilty. Yeah, she was, I, yeah. that's how I took it, yeah. that she was yeah. feeling guilty. Yeah. And I, I, you know, everyone is entitled to have yeah. their, their right. feelings. So, you know, I, I let her have her emotions, right. and yeah. it's okay. Right. But I know what that happened. I know what yeah. happened. So right. I'm not going to argue with no, you about no, it because my reality to. is in your truth are two different things. What right. you know to be true, you know, I can't say whether or not you knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know, then that is your truth. But my reality mm -hmm. is that this is what was happening right, to me. Right, so, right, right. yeah. Right. Um, also, you were, you were mostly abused by older men. Yes. Was that because of you feel more comfortable with older men, or I think I found myself in the company of older men searching for that father figure. You know, my dad, he he wasn't around since I was a little girl. He was in and out of jail all the time. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted that father figure, you know, and I was the oldest, so I had a brother, but I didn't have a big brother. So I didn't feel like I had that protection, and that's how I ended up in that relationship with the guy who was 15 years older than me, because he became my protector. The relationship was completely inappropriate, mm -hmm. but I told him what was happening, and he stopped all those other people from, from molesting me. So mm -hmm. even though he was, in essence, doing the same thing, he kept them off of me. So it was the lesser of two evils. It deal with this one person or deal with five, six, seven different people. Yeah. And, you know, it, as crazy as it sounds, you know, he wasn't a bad guy. Like, he exposed me to a lot of different things, different music, mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. you know, foods. So I learned a and lot. People. And people. Yeah. So I learned yeah. a lot yeah. from him, mm -hmm. you know, while we were together. Mm -hmm. But I always say, people say, well, you know, he proposed when you turned 18. Why didn't you stay with him? Well, I grew up and I felt that he did, right. you know. Same, same. I, I felt that he was the same person that I met when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was maturing as a person and as a woman and it was time for me to move on. Mm -hmm. Well, so, that's I, what happens a lot of times in relationships, you grow. Yeah. And one person will grow at a different level than another person, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then it's kind of scary that he was with you, you know, at, at 12. At you know, then you yeah. kind of look yeah. at the was. whole thing and you're like, hmm. Yeah, mm. when you look at it as a whole, it's, it's creepy. It's very creepy. <laughs> right. But, you know, it, yeah. it, there were, it had its positive moments. Yeah, exactly. Some good came out of it. It was out of it. utilized to your advantage, thank exactly. goodness. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. I, I really, I truly applaud you from the way you came. But um, if this is an uncomfortable question, you say it's uncomfortable, I don't want to answer what, was your dad around while your mom was doing drugs? He and wasn't. How old were you? Well, my dad was also off and on doing drugs and mm -hmm. using drugs, and you know you can't sell what you can't smoke what you're selling. So yeah, obviously wasn't too bright in that area. Mm -hmm. But um, he was off and on drugs and in and out of jail, so he wasn't really there. And then when he did get clean for a while, he moved to South Carolina, okay. so he was gone. And so in, in, in the, the asset question I'm trying to ask is, you, you and your brother, you, you're living with, with your mom. Yes. 
How, how are you surviving and eating? Are you having um, balanced meals or? Yeah, well, my grandmother people's... lived with us too, um, but she was kind of in her own world because she had a boyfriend at the time who was living with us. And when he was around, you know, it was kind of there's food in the refrigerator, cook and, 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 and take care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, so, question really quick How old was your grandma? My grandmother was, my family was very young. My That's grandmother. What I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, my grandmother had my mother at 14, and my mother had wow. me at 18. Wow. So my family was okay. very young. Yeah. So I think that Nobody when knew. I was growing up, yeah. everybody was still trying to Grow hold up. on to. And, yeah, and they every, were growing we grew up. up together. Yeah, right. yeah, we grew up together, and everything wasn't all bad. I mean, the book, you know, it, it sounds like everything was bad, yeah. but we did have great family yeah. moments yeah. when they were high. Because my grandmother, she also smoked marijuana. When they were, you know, doing the drugs, things were in disarray. But when they were sober, it was a strict household. I knew what I could and could not get away with. I knew don't even try it. Don't. So you had good foundation. Yeah, I had a strong yeah, foundation. Yeah, you had a strong yeah, foundation. I knew don't, yeah. don't cross that line. You're right. going to be picking yourself up off the floor. So, you know, and yeah. they, they came to school functions and all yeah. of those things. Yeah. It wasn't until a little bit later on when my mother got really heavy into the drugs that, you know, mm -hmm. things went really crazy. So is your so, grandmother still alive? My grandmother passed away in 2010. So, but since they were so young, now what, what was her challenge? How did she, what she pass away? Um, my grandmother, she had diabetes and she ended up having a stroke and a heart attack. But how old so was she then? She passed away, I think she was... Only in her 50s, she, right? Yeah, her late 50s. Wow. Well, yeah, she's her late 50s, I think 58. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it's lifestyle. My mother yeah. was 38 yeah. when she yeah. passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so. people were not doing treating their bodies right. Yeah, and I know that you're suffering from lupus. At this yes, point. I've been diagnosed with lupus. Um, two years ago, I was diagnosed, and I've been checked. My mother had me checked every year from um, 12 years old up because she had it. So mm -hmm. I've been checked, and I've always been sick, and it's been labeled everything from Lyme disease to at one point they tried to say it was leukemia. I was not claiming that. Right. Um, and eventually the ANAs came back several times positive for lupus. Mm -hmm. So they slapped the official label on Are it. Are they giving you any kind of drugs? Or um, I was on some light steroids. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I still take it. I don't take it the way that I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't like medication. Yeah. It's very hard for me to take medication watching my mother take all the medication that she took growing up, it made it very difficult for me. Like, I don't even like taking Tylenol. Right, I'll right. sleep a and headache. If I have yeah. a headache, I'll go to sleep. So, but, you know, I take it. If I really feel myself coming down, I know it's all right. You've been off your medicine too long. You can't play these games. H have you ever taken anything natural so that you can, you know, and, the, and as I said, I was talking to you and we did scan you. And mm -hmm. you're actually younger than what your age is, which is very good. Yeah. But... The thing is, at this point, you know, you have to get off the sugar. You got to start treating your body right, okay? Yeah. Because you have a story and you want to be able to share your story, <laughs> you know? So in order to share that story, you have to be healthy, Yeah. okay? And in order to be healthy, you have to treat your body right. Yeah, well, I've, I've decided, I've been telling my friends all week that today was my last day of be greedy. Okay. So... Team workout starts on Monday. Okay, cool. Well, not <laughs> Monday, on tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll start eating right tomorrow, but I'll start working out on Monday. Oh, okay, okay, that's okay. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's very good. But, yeah. you, you know, you look good and you, you know, but just to keep yourself healthy because you, you have autoimmune disease, your body's trying to attack. Yeah. So in order to do that, and it's something basics, you just have to get back to basics. And even though your mom had it, you can stop because now you're going to do the right thing for your bodies, you yeah. know. So I know that the medication, and it starts having your, um, actually, your body start to react. And that's how autoimmune disease is. It, st yeah. it starts to react to the, the medications and stuff like that. It's not necessarily the disease. It's just things that you're putting in your body yeah. and creating these reactions. So you have to be really, really careful. Yeah. I've been blessed yeah. enough. I've been yeah. in remission since... Um, September, okay, and I haven't sense. taken my medicine since October, and I feel great actually. Okay, that's okay. Cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're gonna just make you feel better. <laughs> <Even> better, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've been through so much. 
you know, yeah. and you do have that new book coming out, so you want yeah. to get that out. And it's going to be a collection of poems also. No, that one is going to be more of a narrative. Okay. It will have some poems in it because naturally that's just my style of writing. Mm -hmm. I write, I love poetry. It and just tells a better story for me, but it's going to be more of a narrative. Okay, so yeah. we're going to share a poem now? Um, sure. I will read one of the poems in here. I just had the page. Bear with me a moment. I lost it. No problem. Um, <laughs> the title of the poem is I Remember, and the majority of this was written as I was coming up because this, this book is literally my journal it's from childhood. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kept a journal, and I decided to publish my actual journal. But this particular poem was written in two, right before the book came out, around 2010. 2009, 2010, it's one of the last poems that I wrote. And the story behind it is I ran into one of the guys who raped me when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And here it is, now I'm 20 something and I see him and he actually tried to intimidate me. And it worked initially, like mm -hmm. it just, I withdrew, I went into a shell and so I started writing because that's my therapy. I started writing and this poem came out and after I wrote it, I put it in my pocket and I held on to it just in case I saw him again. And about a week later, I ran into him again and I gave it to him and I let him know, I'm not 11, 12 years old yeah, anymore. I'm yeah, a grown woman now right. and we're on an even playing field now. So you need to fall back because you try that again and it's not going to be a pretty sight. Mm. But the title of the poem is I Remember. And I remember, like it was yesterday, I remember. Though I don't want to, I remember. The feelings you evoked inside, the childhood crush I had for you. I remember the way my inside smiled when you noticed me. I remember the pleasant sound of your voice, your scent. I remember the moment you transcended from the one I adored to the one I feared most. I remember the tremble I felt inside when the tone of your voice changed, when the glow in your eyes faded. I remember your hands wrapped around my body, the words from your lips narrating the things you, want, you wanted to do to me. I remember saying, no, I'm not supposed to. I remember saying, no, I'm scared. I remember saying, please don't. I remember the weight of your body on top of mine. I remember silent tears flowing from my eyes as your body entered mine. I remember the stench of your scent, which I once thought was pleasant, the pain of the concrete stair pushing into my back. Every time you pushed inside of me, I remember wondering how many other 11-year-old girls had a crush on you. I remember, like it was yesterday, I remember. Though I don't want to, I do remember. When I read that again last night, because I reread the whole book again, mm. and it just <sighs> touched me, you know, and yeah. as the whole book has touched me, and you have touched me, you know, and you being a person that has been able to be so transparent and sharing your life, you know, and, and, and your struggles, you know, and that helping you to become the lady the young lady that you are, you know, it's, it's, you know, I see the emotions of some folks in here right now, and it just, it, it, it's, but it needs, it needs to be said. Yeah, it needs it's to be. It needs to be said. And it it's, does. People, because people hide and they don't share, and I'm so glad you were able to share, because I know there's so many people out here yeah. that are going through it. And yeah. This story belongs to, to so yeah. many people. Yeah. I'm just the voice for it at this particular time. Yeah. But it's not just my story. Yeah. This story belongs to so many. It's actually scary how many people. Yeah. But it's rewarding to be able to talk to people. I went to a high school in Brooklyn on November 18th mm -hmm. and talked to 9th through 12th graders. Right. And their responses were just amazing. It was the most humbling experience. And I talk to kids all the time. I talk to students at Roosevelt High School where my alma mater, mm -hmm. and they share their stories. But it always, it usually takes them a while to open up. And maybe it's because they know me. Mm -hmm. 
But these kids in Brooklyn, like immediately, they opened up and they shared their stories and they thanked me for wow. telling my story. And it was just the most humbling experience. They wrote these wonderful letters for me and just amazing, just amazing. What was your breaking point? You said, I'm not gonna take it anymore, I'm gonna speak. There was something that happened. You said, this is it. Yeah, I couldn't what hold it anymore. Like I found myself, I would tell a little bit to this person and a little bit to this person. And I remember one day, like I just, it was something at work. One of my kids was going through something. These kids, they go through so much. And he was dealing with something and his story was just heartbreaking. And it triggered my mm -hmm. own story, you know. And it was, you know, I'm crying and, and I'm asking myself, am I crying for him or am I crying for me? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and in, I, I said, I remember saying, I have to, I have to spill the beans to whomever will listen. I don't care. Like, I just need to get it all out on the table. And two of my friends, they came over and I sat there and I told them the entire story from beginning to end. And like, there was no, they didn't ask any questions. There was no judgment. You know, they never brought it up again. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so relieved. Yeah. Yeah. And then like a year or so later, I responded to a casting call. And I didn't really know what I was walking into, but it just so happened that they were looking for people with survivor stories to tell their stories. And I sat in this room full of people, you know, with cameras around me and like five people on a panel, strangers, and I shared my story. And I walked out of there feeling very relieved and it was like, Okay, this is the second time I've done this, and I'm still alive. Yeah, you know? and, it's and I feel better. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I started, you know, getting to the point where I'm like, all right, I think I have the courage to, you know. And I was very hesitant when I when I published it. I only published one copy, and you know, I kind of laid it on my desk and let them pick it up. And well, what's that? And you know, and once I started getting that feedback, it was like, all right, I can do this. I was still very afraid of how my family would respond. Yeah. Because they didn't know until the book came out. Right. But well, before, because we only have a few more minutes. Okay. Okay. So we even actually won. So I wanted you to tell your website. Okay. Tell them where they can get in contact with you. And um, whatever else you, and share whatever you want so that they can, you know. Okay. Share with you back. Okay. okay. Well, my name is Shakima Monique Clark. Um, my Email address, and I respond to all emails, is Shakima, S-H-I-K-E-M-A, the letter B, like boy, at yahoo.com. My Twitter account is S. Monique Clark. Um, I'm on Facebook under Shakima Monique Clark. So, and if you Google me, all my information comes up. <laughs> I'm all over Google. So if you're looking for me, I'm very easy to find, and I do respond to all emails if you're interested in sending me an email. The book is available on Amazon and Kindle, and I just want to say thank you for having me. Oh, it's thank been you wonderful for talking out. to you ladies. Oh. Yes, this is a great experience. Well, thank you for coming, and I really I definitely have an open invitation anytime. And um, we're going to um, just graduate, you know, congratulate you for being who you are. Thank you. And such a blessing and uh, inspiration. You're definitely an inspiration. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you are. Yeah. Thank you. And um, this is Passion for Life with Dean and Friends, and we'll be back next week. And um, thank you for joining us. Have a great night.